Good morning, dear students. Uh, my name is Farhan Mazar, and today is 25th of the April 2022. Right now, I am with the 11th Cambridge class, and the subject we are studying is Physics 5054. This is Cambridge O Levels Physics, and the code of the subject is 5054. Today, we have set our hearts to solve a theory paper, and we have selected October, November 2011. 2-2 two, two paper. This paper 2 belongs from the zone 2 or you can say the variant 2. In this video, in this session, we are going to solve the section B of this paper. The section A of this paper I have already solved and it has been uploaded in my YouTube channel. And you can find that in the same playlist where you have found this video. So let's start today's paper and the section. Okay, so here we go. So October, November 2011, to do paper, the section B. Figure 9.1 is the speed time graph for a racing car of total mass 650 kg as it sets off from rest at the start of a race. So it's the speed time graph of that car. And uh, on the y-axis, you can see the speed is given in meter per second. On the x-axis, we have time, and that time is in seconds. So the car travels in a straight line until the time is nine seconds. OK. So state the speed of the car at the time t equals to nine seconds. So here is your graph. So let me increase the size so you can see the whole thing. <coughs> Sorry. So at t equals to nine seconds, check what is the speed. So it's 72. When the time is nine seconds, the speed is 72 meter per second. So just write here 72 meter per second. Then he says, calculate for the car between T zero to T nine seconds, the distance traveled. It's a speed time graph. So if you want to calculate what is the distance traveled, that will be equal to the area under the speed time graph. So up to nine seconds here, this shape will be a triangle. So find the area of this triangle. The base of this triangle is nine and the height of this triangle is 72. You know, the formula for the area of the triangle is one by two into base into height. So very easily you can find uh, the area of this triangle. The area of the triangle is one by two base into height. So one by two into nine into 72, and that will be 324 meter. So let's, let's check our answer. So the marking scheme for the question number nine, 72 meter per second is the right answer, sir. And the area under the graph is 324 meter. So our answer is right. Okay, so let's move to the next part. He says the acceleration of the car. So if you want to find out the acceleration of the car from zero to nine seconds, it's a straight line. So it's a speed time graph and, the, and you know the gradient of this speed time graph is equals to the acceleration. So if you want to find out the acceleration of the car, take two points on this line. And for example, I take 0 comma 0 and 9 comma 72 and apply the formula of the gradient and you know the formula for the gradient Gradient in your mathematics uh, coordinate geometry, you have learned that. Uh, the gradient is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So just apply that formula and that will give you the acceleration of this car. So let me show you uh, my work. So I have taken two points on that straight line, 9 comma 72 and 0 comma 0. And so the acceleration will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, 72 minus 0 divided by 9 minus 0. So 72 by nine, so it will be eight meter per second square. Eight meter per second square. So let's check. Eight meter per second square is the right answer, sir. Okay, so the next question, he says the resultant force acting on the car, you know, if you know the acceleration 
of a uh, body and you know the mass of the body you can find the resultant force which is producing that acceleration according to the newton's second law of motion f is equals to ma so we will apply that formula we know the mass of the car we know the acceleration in the car so we can find the resultant force which is producing that acceleration so f is equals to ma so the mass is 650 kg and the acceleration is 8 meter per second square just multiply them 650 into 8 and that will be 5200 newton so it's 5.2 x per 3 newton 5.2 x per 3 newton so let's check from the marking scheme 5.2 x per 3 newton is the right answer sir okay so let's move to the next question he says uh, the acceleration of the car is constant between t equals to 0 and t equals to 9 seconds Suggest and explain why the driving force on the car must increase to keep the acceleration constant. You see, uh, because the car is accelerating, so it means its speed is increasing. As the speed of the car increases, the, the air resistance which is acting against the motion of the car, that is also increases because that, that air resistance depends upon the speed of the body. The more the speed of the body, the more will be the air resistance. So the, the speed of the car is increasing. So the air resistance acting on the car, that is also increasing. But the driving force, if you keep the driving force constant, then your acceleration will start decreasing. So to keep the acceleration constant, because the, 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 the air resistance is gradually increasing with the increase in the speed, to keep the same resultant force, you have to increase the driving force because the opposing forces are increasing. So let me show you uh, my written answer and here we go. As the speed increases, the air resistance increases, resultant force will decrease. To keep the resultant force constant, driving force has to increase. That's my answer. So let's check from the marking scheme. The direction of the car motion, oh, sorry, friction or air wind resistance or drag increases as the speed increases. Resultant net unbalanced force remains constant. For that purpose, you have to increase the driving force. Hopefully you understand. That was a three marks question, okay? A very technical answer. After T is equals to nine seconds, the car starts to turn a corner and follows a circular path at constant speed. Explain why the car is accelerating even though its speed is constant. Whenever you move in a circular track, although your speed is constant, the magnitude of the velocity is constant, but when you move in a circular track, you have to change your direction to keep in the circular track. So because the velocity also has direction, so your velocity magnitude is constant, but the direction of the velocity is continuously changing because you are moving in a circular track. So because of the change in the direction of the velocity, we can say velocity is changing. And due to that, we say the there is acceleration. There is change in velocity, which means there is acceleration in the car. Although the car is moving at a constant speed. Okay, so let me show you my written answer. Direction of motion changes when car is moving in, in, in turn. In turn means, uh, not in turn. In turn means you are taking a turn. So I think this, this sentence has become a little weird, but I, I want to say that when you are moving in a turn, when you are moving in a circular track, due to change in direction, velocity changes. And there is a resultant force acting toward the center of the circle. This happens because there is a resultant force acting toward the center of the circle. So direction of the car motion speed velocity changes, therefore velocity changes. So therefore there is acceleration. Okay, so next part. State the direction of this acceleration. You see that when you move in a circular track, the direction of the acceleration is always toward the center of that circle in which you are turning. Acceleration is directed toward the center of the circle, center of that circular track. Okay, so toward the center of the circle, that's our answer is right. Okay, so next question. State and explain what causes the car to accelerate as it turns the corner and that the centripetal force is the force and that force is provided uh, by the friction between the tires and the roads. B between the tire and the road, sorry, I said roads. So, Friction between the road and the tires provide the force which causes the acceleration as it turns the corner. 
hopefully you understand and let's have a look at the marking scheme what it says friction with the ground or banking of the track or mention the wheels and the tires reaction force x towards the center so i think our answers are good okay so we are moving to the next question the next question is question number 10 a lead bullet of mass 1.9 gram is fired from a rifle in a sports club the bullet misses the target and embeds itself in a wall behind the target. The bullet melts as it is stopped by the wall. The specific latent heat of fusion of the lead is 2.2 x per 4 joules per kg. State what is meant by the melting point. Melting point is the temperature at which a pure substance will convert from the solid state into the liquid state and the temperature will not change. So that's the definition. You have to kind of remember it. Okay, so temperature at which a substance converts from the solid to liquid and the temperature remains constant. So that's our definition. Remember this word to word. Temperature where liquid and solid may coexist together or solid turns to liquid. I hope you understand. Then he says, calculate the energy required to melt the bullet as it's at, at its melting point without raising its temperature. You know, the uh, latent heat is given here. The specific latent heat of fusion is given here. The mass is given here. So whenever the state change takes place, uh, the heat can be found by the formula. Heat is equals to ML, where M stands for the mass and L stands for the specific latent heat of uh, fusion. So we know both the things, so we can find that heat. So energy is equals to ML. M is the mass and L is the specific latent heat. And if I show you what are the units used, you see uh, in the in, in here he used 2.2 x per 4 joules per kg. So for mass, he has used the unit kg, but the mass of the bullet is in grams. So they should be uh, consistent with each other. So I will convert that 1.9 gram into kg. How you convert 1.9 grams into kg? You divide it with 1,000. So here I have done that. Let me show you. 1.9 divided by 1,000. I converted that 1.9 gram into kg and 2.2 x per 4. So you get the answer 41.8 joules. It's approximately 42 joules. So let's check the marking scheme. So our answers are right. It was how much marks? It was of one mark. Sorry, it was of three marks. This article was of three marks. Easy peasy. Assume that the energy that melts the bullet is equal to its kinetic energy just before it strikes the wall. Calculate the speed of the bullet just before it strikes the wall. You know, uh, he says that this energy was due to the kinetic energy. So this energy was equal to the kinetic energy. We know the formula of the kinetic energy is one by two mv square. So write one by two mv square equals to this energy, which we just calculated. Okay, so here we go. So I write uh, kinetic energy is equal to one by two mv square. He said that it is equal to that energy which melts the bullet. So uh, one by two mv square equals to forty one point eight joules. So m in the kinetic energy formula m is always in kg remember this thing never forget this thing in the formula of the kinetic energy one by two mv square the mass is always in kg so uh, 1.9 gram i will convert that into kg so for that purpose i write divided with 1000 so one divided by two multiply 1.9 divided by 1000 into v square equals to 41.8 so we will make v square alone on one side so v square will be equals to 41.8 multiply 2 multiply 1000 divided by 1.9 so v square will be equals to 44000 take the square root on both the sides so v will be equals to 209.76 which is approximately 210 210 meter per second so the speed of the bullet was approximately 210 meter per second. Let's have a look at the markings. Oh, our answers are right. So we are done with this numerical. This numerical was of three marks. Again, this numerical was a three mark. This numerical was three marks. Okay. So just two reasons why the speed of the bullet as it leaves the rifle is greater than the value calculated. So we say that the bullet, when it hit, 
the wall is at 210. So, so when it came out of the rifle, its kinetic energy should be more than this kinetic energy from where we came to know that the speed is 210 meter per second. The reason is you see, whenever you fire, the bullet, uh, when it will be traveling, it will be traveling at a very high speed. So it has to overcome, it will face air friction. So it will have to overcome that friction. So one reason can be that, that when it left the rifle and it reached the target, it has to travel through air and it has to face the air resistance. So its speed when it left the rifle was more than 210 meters per second. The other thing can be that uh, the, the temperature of the bullet might not be the melting point. So the, the kinetic energy has to provide heat to raise the temperature of the bullet to its melting point. So the kinetic energy has to be more than this. So the speed of the bullet has to be more than 210. So let's have a look at markings, uh, my answers. Work done by the bullet to overcome air friction and energy used to raise the temperature of the bullet to its melting point. So these are my answers. So let's have a look at the marking scheme, what the marking scheme said. Any two of heat loss to the wall, heat to raise the bullet to the melting point, air resistance, air friction reduces energy, speed, velocity of work done against the air resistance, air friction in the air as bullet travels. So our answer is right, sir. He said, describe how the molecular structure of the lead changes as it melts. Lead, the bullet is made of lead. So basically he's asking that uh, when some solid converts into liquid, so what, what molecular, what are the changes taking place as in the terms of molecular structure? You see, when it was solid, uh, the molecules were in a fixed position on a lattice and they were in the regular pattern. They were not allowed to move around. They were vibrating about their fixed positions. So when they will convert into liquid, they will be no more in the regular pattern. They will be no more fixed on a fixed position. Uh, they will be no more vibrating. They will start moving around in the liquid body from one point to another body, another point in, the, in, the, in, in clusters and they will move, the molecules will move away from each other. Uh, there will be less uh, intermolecular forces between the molecules. So these are the some changes when some solid converts into the liquid. Let me show you my answers and then we will look at the mark scheme. Molecules move away from each other. They are no more in regular arrangement. They start moving randomly instead of being on a fixed position and vibrate they start moving in clusters throughout the liquid. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. It says any three of, any three of, become further apart, we have written that, molecules become randomly positioned, less ordered, we have written that. Molecules moving throughout the liquid in clusters were fixed, free to move, slide over each bonds broken, overcome, weaker or forces reduced. So our answers are right. Okay, so the D part, he says, on another equation, lead bullets of twice the mass are used. One of these heavier bullets hits the wall with the speed calculated in the B second part. State and explain whether this bullet melts as it is stopped by the wall. You see, if the bullet becomes uh, of, of the double mass and the mass of the bullet becomes double and the speed is still the same, the kinetic energy will become double. You know, the formula for the kinetic energy is 1 by 2 mv square. If the speed remains the same and the mass becomes double, 1 by 2 mv square. So if the mass will dip double, the kinetic energy will double. So now the bu bullet will have the double kinetic energy. So I think that it will be able to melt the bullet. The energy will be enough to melt the bullet. Because the mass of the bullet has doubled, but the energy of the bullet has also become, the kinetic energy has also become doubled. So the bullet will melt. It will melt because due to double mass, the kinetic energy also becomes double. There will be enough energy to melt the bullet. Okay, so that's our answer. Twice the energy needed. So the energy to melt that bullet is twice, but because the mass has become doubled, so
he has here he has using a different technique we have used this technique we have used this answer he says the heat required to melt is ml that is equals to the kinetic energy m and m cancel so in this equation the m is irrelevant if the velocity is still the same the thing will melt due to its kinetic energy so we are done with the question number 10 so now we are moving to the question number 11 Figure 11.1 illustrates a neutron hitting a uranium-235 nucleus. So here you can see we have a uranium-235 nucleus. You bombard it with a neutron and that neutron will break this nucleus and it will split into two daughter nuclei. One is krypton nucleus and one is barium nucleus. And three more neutrons will be formed. This process is called nuclear fission. Nuclear fission, where you break a large nucleus and a smaller nuclei are formed. The uranium-235 nucleus splits into a nucleus of barium and nucleus of krypton, and three neutrons are released. State the name of this process. This process is called the fion. This process is called a nuclear fion. This process is called nuclear fion. Okay. So let's move. In, let me I increase the size so you can see clearly. In, uh, sorry, this process may be represented by a nuclear equation. An incomplete version of this equation is shown below. Calculate the number of neutrons in the nucleus of the uranium-235. Okay, you see the mass number on both the sides is supposed to remain the same. And the proton number on both the sides is also supposed to remain the same. The proton number is represented at the bottom and the mass number is represented at the top. Okay, so on this side, uh, the mass number is 36. And on this side, this mass number is three, this is 92 and this mass number I can find. So uh, from 30, 236, subtract 92 and three. So you will get the mass number of the barium. So once you know the mass number of the barium, uh, then you can find easily the number of neutrons in the barium. From the mass number, subtract the proton number, you will get the number of neutrons. Sorry, but the question is not this. Uh, the question is, sorry, the number of neutrons in the nucleus of uranium-235. If you want to find the number of neutrons in the uranium-235, it's very simple. The mass number minus the proton number. Sorry. Okay, so let me show you. 235 is the mass number minus 92 is the uh, proton number. So 235 minus 92, that will give you 143. So the number of neutrons in the uranium 235 are 143. The next question is the proton number or the atomic number of the krypton. So the, let me show you from the question paper because that is more uh, clear. Then the question is the proton number, atomic number of the krypton. Here, the atomic number or the proton number we want to find out. So 92 plus 0, 92. That should be equal to 56 plus this unknown plus this is 0. So let me show you how we found it. So 92 minus 56 minus 0, and that will be 36. So the proton numbers are 36. Hopefully you understand. Okay, let me show you the next part. He said the nucleon number or the mass number of the barium. So the mass number, I told you, 235 plus 236. From 236, subtract 92 and 3. Its mass number is 3. So you will get the barium's a mass number. Nucleon number, we call it. So 1 plus 235 minus 92 minus 3. So it will be 1 plus 140, and that will be 141. So 141 is the right answer, sir. Hopefully you understand. Let me show you the marking scheme. So 143, 36, and 140, 41, and our answers are right. Okay. So we are going to the next question. He said, during this process, there is a decrease in the mass energy is released. The decrease in the mass is 3.1 expo minus 28 kg. And the speed of the light is 3 expo 8 meter per second. 
calculate the energy released in this process. You know, we have an equation, we call it the Einstein's energy mass equation, mass energy equation, that says that the mass can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into equation. And it's a very famous equation. You must have seen this equation in different places. E equals to mc squared. E equals to mc squared, where E means the energy, M means the mass which will be converted, which will convert into energy. And the C is the speed of the light whose value is three X for eight meter per second. So I can tell how much energy will be released. It's very simple. E equals to MC square, the mass which converted into energy is 3.1 X per minus 28 kg. And uh, so speed is three X per eight and it's square. So you will have, in your calculator, you will write 3.1 expo minus 28, multiply bracket start, 3 expo 8, bracket close, square equal, you will get 2.79 expo minus 11 joules. 2.8 expo minus 11 joules will be the right answer, sir. So let's have a look at the marking scheme. And my dear students, the answer is right. So we are done with this. Okay. Here we have the question C. It's a five mark question. Let me reduce the size so you can see the whole thing. Here we have a five marks question, a part in that question. A nuclear power station generates electrical energy. In the power station, steam is used to drive a turbine. Describe how the splitting of uranium-235 is used to produce the steam. You may include a block diagram. You see in a nuclear reactor, we have uranium rods and they are bombarded with the neutrons and their process of fusion starts. So uh, around that uh, uh, rods, uh, we, 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 we bring, uh, uh, we, what we call that? So we bring their coolant. So uh, there's a liquid which we call coolant. And that coolant is circulating around those rods in which the, the Fian process is taking place. So the heat, there is enormous amount of heat produced uh, by the Fian process. That coolant absorbs that heat and that coolant becomes hot. And with the help of the pipes, we take that coolant away. And then we have big boilers. Boilers are like a pressure cooker and the coolant circulates inside the pipes around that boiler and in that boiler we have water and that boiler boi and that and the water in the boiler that absorbs the heat from the coolant and that water uh, becomes hot and it converts into steam and from the boiler we have small uh, valves on that boiler and through the valves the steams come out at a very high pressure and uh, by that coming out steam at a very high pressure, we uh, bring uh, the blades of the turbine and when that steam hits the turbine blades, the turbine starts rotating and that is used to rotate the coil of a generator and then the generator produces the electricity. So uh, I can make a block diagram, you can see here, we have the rods of the uranium-235 in a reactor and then we have a coolant that will absorb the heat from here. And that coolant will give the heat to the boiler. The boiler has water in it. And from here, the steam will be produced. So uranium-235 rods are bombarded with the neutrons. The Fian reaction is initiated. More neutrons are produced. Chain reaction starts. Coolant is circulated around the rods. The coolant take away the heat produced to the boiler. In boiler, water heats up and steam is produced. It's a five marks question. This is my answer. So now let's look at the, the marking scheme. Here you can see in the market, any five of the core rods, reactors, you need to the coolant and the boiler and the water. One mark for the three correct boxes. Splitting produces kinetic energy of the neutrons for the splitting chain reaction, energy heat produced from the reactor, reaction or from the neutrons, coolant gets hot, energy to the boiler, water, water heated or water, heat in the water implied, and the water boiled or steam produced. It's a five mark question. Hopefully you understand. 
some of the waste products from a nuclear power station are radioactive and have very long half-life. Half-lives. State the meaning of the half-life. Remember this definition of very, very frequently and a very famous definition, frequently asked in Cambridge exam. Always comes uh, uh, of the two marks. Is the average time duration, average time duration in which a radio, in which the half of a radioactive isotope decays? Let me show you my written definition. Average time duration in which half of a radioactive sample decays. Word to word. Remember this definition, word to word. Time of something to have, time for radioactivity, count rate, number of atoms, nuclei to have. Okay, so we are moving to the next question. The next question is, describe one safety precaution that is taken when radioactive waste products are handled. You see, there are so many uh, precautions which you can take. I can tell you something. Some of them, for example, you are supposed to wear the lead lining suits. For example, you are supposed to wear uh, a badge uh, to, to note down the, the, um, the exposure. You have to keep your exposure time minimum. Use uh, forceps to handle the material. Use tongs and uh, to handle the material. So there can be so many. One appropriate precaution, short exposure time, safety, protective suit, gloves, clothes, or lead boxes, large distance, long handle, tools, forceps, tongues, robotic, mechanical handling, film, batch. So we are done with this paper. So my dear students, we are done with the section B of this paper. And here are, here are my answers and uh, wear lead lining suits, okay? So, so my dear students, uh, today in this video, in this session, we have done October, November, 2011, uh, Physics 505422 paper. In this video, in this session, we have done the section B of this paper. The section A of this paper, we have already solved and it is already uploaded in the YouTube channel. I'm very grateful to you that you have shown patience and you have taken no time to watch this video. If you are watching this video and you have found that this video is informative, this video is helpful to you, and this video has made your life a little easier, and by sitting at your home and watching the YouTube uh, channel, you are able to practice the past papers of the Cambridge O-Levels Physics 5054. Do share the link of this video onto your Facebook accounts and onto your Instagram accounts and onto your Twitter accounts. Also subscribe my channel, like this video. If you have any comment, please comment. Your comments and your appreciations, they are like a fuel and they make me work. I am thankful to God that he has given me opportunity to be helpful to so many students around the world. So special thanks to the students in Bangladesh, the students in Mauritius, the students in Brunei, the students in Sri Lanka, the students in India, the students in UAE. So Zimbabwe and all around the world, the students are watching these videos and they send me messages. Uh, of the thanks. So I cannot reply to all of them uh, because of some time constraint, but I sometimes read them and I feel so happy. And I'm also grateful to God that he has given me the opportunity to, to be able to do this. So thank you very much, everyone. Keep studying hard. God will bless you and he will bring the success to your way. Thank you very much. Have a good day. God bless you all.